happy Saturday. Welcome to the Marketing Mad Men. Trip Joe and Nick Constantino here live from the Battery. And uh, yeah, we're going to get uh, get into that uh, debate. We have a lot uh -oh. about uh, the agency world. All right. So, Trip, I'm going to start this one with a question also. All right. Okay. So, based on what you know of me, do you consider me a strategic thinker? Ooh. <laughs> well, believe it or not, I will say yes. You know, so... So I like strategy. My problem with strategy, usually in its implication, is people do it too late. They don't start with strategy. They need jargon to oh, now we need a strategy, and you've missed the whole point of strategy. Strategy is so you don't have to stop what you're doing to come up with a new one. Strategy is so you have at least, you know, and, and we're going to go to Heather. We're going to introduce in a second. But I would say, I always say you need a short term, a medium term, and a long term mm -hmm. strategy. I'm not going to define what those parameters are. You need are. to have a culture of strategy. I mean, it, and so I, again, I came culture up with. Culture is really hard to change, dude. Culture, no, but, but a culture is that every year it was something that we were honestly looking at, but then everything we did from our objectives, our tactics or whatever you know we would we could come back and say wait a second is that on strategy or not all right that, that's agree. a culture of strategy Com completely so. agree Let, let's talk about so a small business owner i think you have to think uh, let's call it six months yeah. let's call it a year to 18 months and i, I would say three to five years and yeah. if you don't have those different parts and you don't have a strategy you have tactics which sets us up for this conversation with heather a day who i've known for quite some time um and her company Marketex. and heather is here to talk through so how she does some of these strategies yeah. and i think the advice we're going to give is going to help a lot of businesses hopefully not too much that they don't call her but yeah. enough that we get that we, we wet the whistle and that's the goal here so heather how are you i am Great. It's so fun to be here with you guys today. We're happy to have you. So I knew you at the Excavation Days. Uh, we randomly met, I think, and then did some work together. Um, I've known Rue now for a while. I think that that is a great business, and I think it's a really hard one to advertise because ultimately home improvement is a brutal field. There's a new one every oh. day. Let me tell you something, that if there is a, a redder ocean, then the home improvement services show it to me because it is, it is really and, and there's nothing red. harder to explain to a business owner than be known before you're needed. Yes. Because they're, they're ROI minded. And it's like, guys, this is not yeah. how this works, right? You can't make hail come. All you can do no. is make sure you're known so right. when it does come, you're the one they think of. And I can't tell you how the ones that do it just will go through recession. They'll sell for five to six times more than the ones that don't do it. And they see it, yet it is so hard to convince mm -hmm. somebody to do it. So mm -hmm. let's talk a bit, a little bit about Marketex. Um, what brought you to start it? What's, what are some of the clients? Let's talk about the business and then we'll talk about some of the strategies that we bring Okay, awesome. So I've had my business for 22 years. Came oh. out of uh, Fortune 500 marketing before that. So basically I like to say that I can bring, you know, some of the sophisticated strategic marketing strengths to smaller businesses. Mm -hmm. And, you know, honestly, it's, that's what the joy is, is to be able to help a small business owner grow. That, and when you get down to it, that's why my tagline is let's grow Yeah, because it is an action oriented goal. And so, that's what we do. So what's your definition of small business? What's kind of the sure. range, size range, revenue size of companies that you find yourself helping most efficiently? Sure. I think that for me, it's been that 10 million to 50 million range mm -hmm. in, in annual re revenues. Um, and what I found is that at 10, there's, there are key milestones yeah. where people get stuck. Yeah, right. ten million is is a common one, so that's why that's one that I really love to work mm -hmm. in. And I think one of the things I found about ten million is that that's almost a come to Jesus moment for that owner. Do you want to? Yeah, exactly. Some people are just thrilled. Oh my with gosh, ten you're million so dollars. Right. So We've scaled to this point, I think it's all I can and, handle. And, and for me, the way I did because this is a big radio debate, right? Is and I say, look, if your job, if your intention is to sell this business, make a quick ROI, don't be on radio. Your brand is worthless. It doesn't matter. Yeah. But if your intention is to hand this business to their kids and you don't have top of funnel activities. So I agree with you. I think 10 million, I think it's hard to differentiate that next milestone level because 10 to 20, some businesses can do pretty easy, especially here, like open right. Chattanooga or Athens. Right. And you're in a close enough geographic area where you can do it. But I think really that, that call that 20 to that 60, 65, that's a hard. Exactly. To I would say 20 is the next one. And then you're right. 50 to 60 right. is, is probably that. And, next and that's milestone. where you go back to strategy to your point. Is it, you know, geographic expansion is it service product offerings is it equity i mean how do is you want to get there in the market more yeah, exactly. or, sh or sharing or, or yeah. stealing market share from yeah. your competitors and yeah. that in the ruby red that's pretty much what we have to do is is really steal share from right. and and that's that's the, what's fun yeah is you go into a lot of these service categories uh small businesses they are i would say their messaging is reinforcing the category they're in yeah which is not differentiating at all. At all. 
and and if they do anything beyond that it typically is how many years of service that you know that they've been in business maybe some awards I would call light duty type of yeah. differentiation, like quality. And all you're doing friendly. with that is bringing all you're doing is bringing yeah. awareness to your industry, and then letting someone else who's a better market than you steal your lunch is all you is all you're doing. Bingo. And so there are so many categories where I feel like there's an opportunity for somebody to say, yeah, if I really truly listened and 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 looked at what everyone in our category is saying, it's all the same, except right. for somebody who's been in the business longer and somebody's promising quality. Okay, so what we do there is then we figure out, all right, what do we truly have that we have a value? In other words, what are we really selling? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because what we're, what we're messaging right now isn't what we're selling. We all know this, I mean, it goes back to Steve Jobs, right? He's, you know, yeah. it's, not, yeah. it's not the computer, why? it's not, it's the why. Right. It's the why someone wants you. So to me, this is a huge discussion on strategy. I don't know how we want to take it right now. Do we yeah. want to go deep dive or well, what do we want to do? Let me ask two questions because in sure. the past now 10 years, because realistically, I'm doing strategy for so many businesses. We yep. have 180 act active advertisers and I can't tell you how many times in an office trying to explain how to do social media yeah. or how to analytics work. It's not even adjacent to our business model, but it becomes that way. And there's a couple of things I've learned. One is, is that it is very hard to get somebody to be open and honest about their intentions yes. because you, what you're talking about is great, but if this company is just trying to make a quick EBITDA increase to sell their business, you need to know that if you're going to help because there are strategies <laughs> yep. and tactics you can use there. The other question, I, and this is more a question for you because I've seen this, how often do you feel like you have to be a mother and a psychologist to these oh people? My goodness. Because yeah, really, <laughs> they don't know answers and their panic is I have to be the owner and I have to know everything. Right. Business owners are such a rare breed. I can't tell you how many times I have withheld from just punching somebody in the face to be like, <laughs> look, you run a no-name company that no one knows about that serves a niche surface to like 50 people. Who the F do you think you are? Yeah. I've only said it once and I actually worked in my favor. They started advertising. Yeah. Uh, but but how often are you, do you have to get past, we, we can't talk strategy. You are so messed up. We have to talk to what your intentions are, what your real goals are, and how do you develop it quickly? Because most times people are so sheltered nowadays, they won't share any of that information. Well, you know, it's funny, Nick, because I actually have had some amazing clients who have opened up because they are at that point of they're done. They want to grow. They're frustrated. And when they're oh. at that point, that's why I say I know the right customer when they're at that point. If they're not there yet, then yes, way more difficult. Got it. And I and I just say we're Got not it. ready yet. And you almost found we're your not niche. ready. You yet. found your right. niche to go after, so you're not chasing them. You're almost waiting for them to get to the state they work with you where you operate best. But you Absolutely. have to dig, you have to dig down to really find out what that pain is. Is is there truly a pain? Right. Well, right. and the pain is it, it usually when they're the, at that point, yeah. it's a growth pain. Yeah. It is a it's one of two things. They have been stagnant or, or, or worse, losing, or they recognize that other people are stealing market share and, mm -hmm. they, and they're not getting their fair share. Yeah. And when they're, when they're at that point and they, don't, they can't figure out how to move it, how to move that needle, yeah. then that's when yeah. I come in. But, but you said something that I want to follow up on. Understanding first what it is that what, what do they want? Yeah. And I define that as what does success look like? Yeah. Let's define again, what that's success short, looks and long term like. also. Because right. if long term you want to sell, we need to know that. Because yeah. then it's an EBITDA play. It has to be. We have to be have multipliers. There's it, easy well, but you also have to look good as a marketer. Right. Because there's a lot of there's a lot of companies now who you might be good on paper and your financials oh, might it. look good, but if you're if you don't have something to purchase from a value or marketing proposition that you gotta my have buddy, that too. My buddy got an extra, let's call it four to six million dollars in EBITDA because of the marketing that he did. Yeah. And, and, and it was a, it was a, you know, one of the problems with home improvement is the barriers to entry are so low, right? All you need yeah. is manpower and a building and not even need a building anymore. And just not going to Google my yeah. business account and you're ready to go and run it and be it. So if there's barriers to entry, that's even harder because right. at any moment someone could come in and eat your lunch boxes, lunch money, especially if you haven't set up barriers to entry by marketing and having sound business practices. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, if they're, if, if the success is taking a paycheck, but that's all they're happy with their paycheck. Right. They're, you know, they're not, they're not, I think for any of us, I don't think that they're the right client. Yeah. Um, but somebody who is just absolutely ready to grow, it can be done. Um, I worked with Exovations and th there was nothing more satisfying than giving, being given a goal of we're going to double this business in five years after um, a few years of stagnant growth. Yeah. And we did it. And I'm not going to sit here and say that that was all architects by sure. any stretch. Right. It was the process. It was the introduction of 
how do we start this thing? Yeah. Where, how do we build the momentum? And it was all around a value proposition. Well, there's an element of realism, it sounds like, there, too. So how often do you go in and, and you get that, yes, I've got pain, I'm frustrated, um, and, yeah, I want to double my business from 10 to $20 million in, um, in a year and a half. Yeah, so, there's, here, so there's a realism that sometimes that, you know, probably well, well, is well, not going to depend on the market. Hold on. Well, in, how but, much do you want to invest to do it? Right. And money will solve everything. If you want to invest enough money, you can double overnight yeah. easily, but you, you're not going to double your EBITDA. You're not going to double your profit. Well, you're going to double the okay, revenue, but, which whoa, is a different whoa, whoa. story. Here's the other thing is there is such thing as growing too fast. Yeah. You know, especially if you are doing what, what I like to do, which is we're carving out, throwing the gauntlet down on what are we actually promising? I want a, I want, if it's an experience that we're promising, you know, with excavations, it was on time, on budget, without all that stress you usually hear about in construction, okay? If that's what we're promising, what does that require of us throughout the organization? It's not just marketing, creating stories. And I feel like, so my competition from a marketing agency, a lot of it is focused on the storytelling. Yeah. And the or the performance marketing exactly or the digital marketing. I can all get you Im- all these leads. All important, all right. important things. Those I would say those are the things that we do to get we are found more readily. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. But to be sought after, that's a whole different category. Yeah. Where you are mm-hmm. actually driving growth and driving demand for your services, whole different deal. Yeah, no, I I think it's great. And I think this is going to set up more. Now let's get into the nitty gritty. When we get back from the break, we'll get more into the nitty gritty on how you do this. Um, I do know that one of the things that people always, they they just fail to understand is price versus value. And Uh, I think when we go into this, I think that's going to be a lot of this. Look, you can, you can charge any price, but it is the value and the value of being on time, being on that really. And we'll, we'll, we'll we'll talk about it. Then we get back to the break. Um, But you listen to the marketing mammon on extra 106.3 and we'll be right back. 